In this tutorial here, we're going to learn how to create your own group. So notice that I'm inside my Office 365 mail app. And the second thing I want you to notice right away is that I'm in the screen where I can see my groups. Don't forget that if you are inside a more view, you can click back out of, and now you should see your groups. Last time we went to discover to join a group. This time we're going to click create in order to begin our own group. So I clicked it. There's two options that come up. The first says standard group. The second one says professional learning community. Now there really isn't too much difference between the two of them. The PLC option has just maybe one additional form in there for helping a group uh, plan the, the PD and, and anything else they want to do for their campus. So most of you will just want to create a standard group. So let's go ahead and click next. There's a few options that we see. The first says choose a name for the group. So for this one, I'm just going to choose test, just a generic name. Group ID, there's nothing we need to fill in there. There is a spot for you to add a description if you would like. It is recommended that on privacy, you change your group setting to private. This will ensure that students will not be able to view any sensitive materials that is available inside of your group when you leave it public. The next option we have is language. I'm going to go ahead and click English. And then the very bottom option is an important option we need to talk about. It says subscribe new members so they receive group conversations in their inbox. If I put a check mark on this and select it, then any conversations that happen will show up directly inside of your inbox. If teachers feel like maybe this is going to cause too many emails to show up in their inbox, you may want to leave this unchecked so that as new messages show up, they will pop up here inside of your group inbox. I'm going to leave subscribe new members on and go back up to the top to say create. The next screen that you see says add members. At this point, you can type in people to have join your group. For now, I'm going to select not now and skip that step. And now we can see the test group is created. It shows up right over here in my groups section of Office 365. And just as before, there's a conversation, calendar, files, notebook, and connectors. Of course, I can go to new conversation to instantly message anybody that's a member of this group. If you look over to the right, you will see a couple of options that you should pay attention to. The first would be these three dots right here. By clicking this, there's a couple of options to pay attention to. Now, first, I see members. If I click this, I will see a list of all of the members that belong to this group. Now I can go to add members and use that to add any additional team members that I'd like to become part of this group. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots again and I see a second option that's pretty important that I want you to pay attention to called edit group. I'm gonna click that and right now if I click this pencil, it'll change this image from T and the ampersand into a, any kind of image I wanna upload. This will make it a little bit easier for me to find my groups right over here. I have the name of the group which can be changed, the description which can be changed. I also have the privacy setting again in case I originally create a public group and need to go back in and change it to private. I also have let people outside the organization email the group and the subscribe new members setting. I also have an option to delete the group if needed. Now, one thing you may want to do when you're adding members is let's go ahead and add Tanya Mills as a member of this group. I will go ahead and click save now to add her. Now, next to her name, she has three dots, and I can go to view details, but more importantly, I can go to make owner. Now, this is a good option you may want to consider because as the creator of your group, if you, for whatever reason, are no longer employed by the district, it's very possible that that group can go away. However, if you assign multiple owners of this group, you can ensure that this group will continue to exist even after you're no longer employed or maybe if you switch campuses. These are all good things to consider as you start creating your groups.